I've done the impossible. I have managed to book a campsite at Flow Lake for the end of September in prime larch season. Just managed to jump on and get a cancellation. So super stoked. Great opportunity to test out my new sleeping bag and also my new sleeping pad. Let's go. majority of the Flow Lake Trail is actually pretty flat. The first six or seven kilometers really just kind of comes through this valley. Um, but one thing I would recommend to people is if you're coming in the height of summer, there really is no shade. And um, you can see these trees behind me. These are kind of the result of, of, a, of a wildfire like many, many years ago that burnt through this area and really kind of killed off all the trees. So if it's 30 degrees, it is a slog. Even the flat section or the mild inclines is hard work. So if you're coming in the summer, come early or come late, try and avoid that midday heat because you will really benefit from having cooler temperatures. Um, today, luckily it's not too hot. It's kind of 20 degrees, um, nice and sunny. So it's not too much of an issue, but just something to keep in mind if you are coming in the summer. We've made it past that flatter section um, and we're kind of halfway up the incline now. You might be able to see like the kind of the valley and the river that we were following earlier is down the bottom there and we're actually heading up right up here you might be able to see this is the head wall of uh, Flow Lake uh, and the lake's just up there. So there's a fair amount of incline left um, but to be honest there's pretty spectacular autumn colour so at least you've got that distraction uh, and luckily the trees have got a lot more greenery just through here. I'm not so affected by that past fire. Um, so it means there is a little bit of respite from the sun if you are out here on a sunny day when you get to the incline, because there's a little bit more shade, which um, to be honest is always nice. So we've come to Flow Lake for large trees. Um, even though the autumn colours on the way in were incredible, loads of oranges, reds, um, it's these larch trees that we've really come for. And you can see behind me, as we're approaching the camp, there are more and more of them. Um, so we're probably about 300 metres away from camp now. Um, so we're just going to enjoy the last bit of the walk uh, and then start taking some photos at the lake. Finally made it to Flow Lake. Um, the last little section there was a bit of a slog. Um, yeah, it's pretty steep for the last kind of kilometer or two, but definitely worth it. I mean, you can see behind me, you've got the towering walls, we've got the lake, and we've got plenty of larches. So super excited. Um, the sun hasn't quite set yet, but to be honest with you, I don't think we'll be shooting much tonight. Um, sunrise is really where it's gonna be at. So for the time being, uh, we're gonna set up camp, grab some food, and then shoot sunrise. So lovely little bit of a backcountry pad thai for dinner. Um, always good, those meals, just super easy. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the sun's kind of come down, but like there's no real light on the mountain apart from this one little bit you might be able to see just in the background there. So we're just gonna really chill for tonight, um, taking the views and then get up super early tomorrow and come down for sunrise and hope there's some perfect reflections in that lake. As soon as I put the camera away, the sky lit up. We were treated to soft pink clouds, framing the mountain peaks. I couldn't not take a picture, so I grabbed the camera back out and grabbed this vertical portrait panorama. This is probably one of my best shots from the trip. And it just goes to show, it's always worth waiting around and having that camera on standby, just in case. It's about 7am, we've just come out for sunrise. 
good thing about coming kind of later in September is the sunrises are a little bit later, but check out this view as we walk down to the lake. One thing with Flow Lake in regards to photography, I suppose, is the head wall behind us is like just so vast and so tall and so impressive that to be able to shoot it and actually get it in frame and get some reflection or get some foreground, you need to go really wide. So if you're coming down here for photography purposes, bring like 16 mil, maybe even 14 if you have it, um, just so you can really get in like the whole grandeur of this incredible, incredible lake. So as you saw earlier, we were actually treated to a pretty epic sunset, to be honest with you. Um, and we had a pretty similar sunrise. You kind of see the colors in the clouds just behind me here as well. Um, so we've been super lucky with the conditions, but one thing I am finding is that even 16 mil probably isn't wide enough. So I'm shooting quite a lot of panoramas or handheld like portrait panoramas. Um, and then you're turning that 16 mil into kind of a 12 mil or a 14 mil equivalent. Um, and also not in too long, I think the sun's gonna come up enough to cast like golden light on these peaks. Um, so when it does that, we should be able to grab some more compositions as well. Um, but I mean, you can't really complain. There's three people down here. Um, me, a couple other photographers, people enjoying the sunrise. Um, to get a lake like this to yourself is pretty incredible. see the golden light all behind me now it's coming in so I couldn't be more excited really um, yeah we're getting some really cool shots this morning um, yeah I've been here before but when I was here last time it was really smoky there were some pretty bad wildfires so I haven't had the opportunity to photograph it quite like this um, one thing is obviously we came here for the larches um, and there are plenty around there's plenty of yellow you can kind of see behind me through here um, they're not quite perfect you know give it a maybe another week and there'd be like kind of prime yellow but um one thing i'm finding is a little bit difficult to kind of incorporate the kind of towering face the lake and larch trees um i know there is a little hike called numa pass further up um which i've been up to before and is great during wildflower season um we'll see how we're feeling we've done a bit quite a bit of hiking recently but if we've got the energy maybe we'll head up there but if not i'll show you those pictures um, from previously with the wildflowers um, you're further up the hills so you can really kind of capture everything in one shot but um, i'm going to run around grab a few more pics um, i've come down the far end of the lake and hope i can get something a little bit different but we will see what happens um, and yeah well enjoy the pictures So I found a little spot kind of nearer the lakefront, but just trying to incorporate those larch trees a little bit in the front. Um, you can kind of see here from the composition, just using them as a bit of a frame. As you can see, the sun has now fully risen. Um, so photography is on hold a little bit and we're just enjoying a bit of breakfast before we head back down. Um, as you probably can tell, Flow Lake is a worthy place to hike to and a worthy place to come and camp. If you're lucky enough to book a campsite or to be able to get a cancellation, 100% recommend coming up here at any time of year. There's amazing wildflowers in the summer um, and obviously you've got the larch trees here, but this lake is always here and the reflections are often incredible. So well worth it for hiking or photography. Um, I'm gonna leave the video there for today because we've got a 10 kilometer hike back down, uh, back to the car, um, and then back home for a bit of a rest because we're hiking in Lake O'Hara tomorrow. But 
If you'd like to see more content from the Canadian Rockies, um, more information about where to hike, where to photograph, uh, the larch trees as well, then please do subscribe. It really helps my channel, motivates me to make more videos, uh, and also helps me find a new audience. So be sure to press that button and um, I'll see you soon.